sitting here with Tata Vic and we're just decided that we're going to talk about something. Yeah. And we're not quite sure what. No. <laughs> you know, we've got a lot of fires here in Los Angeles. There's probably six of them going right now. And there's ashes floating around here and there. And even like I was saying in here, you could even smell them. Uh, and they're not the healthiest thing in the world. It gives me this low, sexy voice. But that's a good thing, right? <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So she's been training for quite a while with weights. She works out with Eric, the trainer. Yeah. And he's gotten you in really good shape, right? He has, but not with weights. No weights. No weights. Like, little to no weights at all. Like free exercises? Yeah. just free. Lunges? Lots of lunges. Oh, yeah. my God. Um, did he restructure your diet? He did. Yeah, like, everything changed about my diet. No corn, no bananas, um, which surprised me the most, because I love bananas, and I never thought corn. No, I never thought of corn. How about popcorn? Yeah, no popcorn. Oh, I had popcorn no yesterday. No popcorn, really? Oh my god, I'm yeah. jealous. Um, but you've lost, you've lost inches. I've lost inches, um, twenty-five pounds. Wow. Twenty-five pounds, yeah. And you never deviate in your diet. I know we've been to lunch mm-hmm. several times. It's always the same thing. It's always the same thing. Yeah, omelets. Yeah, it's so hard for me to cheat. Like I'm so loyal. I'm so committed. Like no. Eric tells me, nothing <clears> after <throat> seven. You know, nothing after seven. I'm never gonna break it. I don't well, eat it, I though. Did. I don't For Thanksgiving. Quite. No, even after 7, I maybe after 8 o'clock, maybe I don't eat at all. I have water. I yeah. eat my dinner, and that's it. There's, I'm not going to have snacks at 9, 10 o'clock at night. I don't even like to eat that late because it's too late. But um, committed is good. Do you have a cheat day? I do. Sundays. And what do you eat? Um, I pretty much break my curfew. Piece of corn? <laughs> <laughs> a piece of corn and banana. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, like I'll have like a... Like a protein cookie. Yeah. And even though that's not considered cheating, no. but like, you know. That's uh, nothing. Yeah, I'm very hard on myself. Like, I'll feel really guilty. Even on a cheat day, I'll be like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I was that way years ago when I was living down in Venice and training hard and, and, and not competition, but I was wrestling. And, but I really stayed on my diet. And then Sundays was a cheat day. And then I felt like, why did I do that? Because Mondays I felt terrible. Exactly. You know, you get that yeah. rush from all the sugar. And yeah. It doesn't feel really good. And you get bloated. Yeah. And then you feel lousy. You You know, I lost taste for a lot of things that I used to eat. Yeah. Like, I don't crave any more um, junk food. I don't either. Pizzas, burgers. Like, I'm a vegetarian anyway, and I've been a vegetarian for almost two years now. Yeah. Yeah, and I never, ever, like, I don't crave any of that stuff. I I like... Candy, nothing. I like burgers, but my theory is on a burger, for example, in and out they use good quality meat and, and produce. You've got the protein in the beef, you have the lettuce, tomato... I don't think there's, they might have a little dressing, and I'm not sure, but then you have the bread, which is only like 11 grams of carbs. So it's not all that bad. Yeah. So someone says, why don't you get it, the, that, what's it, the other style that they goes around a piece of lettuce? Yeah. Well, I tried that once. I want to take a bite, and everything shot out of the, out of the lettuce. That's and, what I get. And hit the plate. The protein style. Yeah, the protein style. I didn't like that at all. If you're going to have a burger, you have the bread with it. I learned to love it. Yeah, well. I learned to love it. You have to. I'm not crazy about it. All right, so all this training that you've been doing, and then you've yeah. done a lot of acting training. Yeah, yeah, I went back to Strasbourg. Yeah. Yeah, it took about a year and a half. And all this is, has culminated into now wrestling, mm-hmm. but you had a martial arts background. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so you put this all together, and now you're working along with WWE. Yes. And that's not easy to do. No. It takes forever. For me, it is. Now it is. <laughs> In the beginning, it's never easy. But once you find your niche and you find your place and everything else kind of just falls together, it comes together. What's your place? WWE. <laughs> Yeah, but let's talk about what you're doing for him. Um, well, I'm developing my own character. Right. Yeah. I mean, I wish I could say a lot more than we could probably talk about. No, I know that. Today, you can't talk about it all. But, no. But you've actually developed something. You put it together yeah. and you gave it to them and they liked it. They loved it. And then your training as far as your wrestling ability is like really good. Yes. And so now you can work your way into the shows and get yourself up to another level. That's right. But for people out there that, and you know, I get a lot of calls that people want to be wrestlers. And they think that, oh, it's just so easy. I'll be ready in three weeks and I'll go to WWE and they'll hire me. But they don't train for it. Yeah. They're not in shape for it. Yeah. They don't want to pay for training because they don't want to. And it's like, sorry, but you pay for any training. Yeah. It's expensive. It it's is. definitely expensive, you know, to be anything professional nowadays because you yeah. have to invest a certain amount of money. 
and you know not everybody has that kind of money no but if you're going to be a plumber or electrician or you're going to be anything you got to go to school to learn it it's going to cost yeah. you to go to school and wrestling is unique it's a, it's a niche that not everybody can do it's a it's a, a cult and it's a it's a closed field of knowledge mm -hmm. that you can only learn from a wrestler. You're not going to go down the street to the karate class and learn about wrestling. And no. if anybody in their 20s says they can train you to be a wrestler, forget about it because they have no life experience. No. And that's the biggest thing I found, even in bodybuilding too, that you get trainers that are 22 years old and they read a book and now they're a trainer, but they've never worked out and had any life experience like myself and some other guys my age have put like 50 years in. Yeah. So that accounts for something. And then people don't want to, they'll send me emails. Can you help me with this and help me with that and help me with this? I said, no, I mean, I, I can only do so much. You want to pay me for my time? That's another thing. Exactly. But then they don't want to be, they don't want to pay you for your time that you put in. Yeah. So it means like you have no value. No. But in reality, you do have value. Sure. Sure. And it's for you. Everything you invest, depending on how much money you invest, it's all for you. Yeah. You know, you have to keep that in mind because people think, oh, well, this is too expensive. Well, I don't know if I can do this, but you know, you're definitely worth it. And it depends how far you want to take it. Well, that's the thing. Now, you, you, you know, I mean, I, I took guitar lessons when I was like 12, and I bought a guitar and I formed a band. I ended up making money with it. You got to deal with Capitol Records, and I took it all the way. Mm -hmm. Now, most people will take guitar lessons and they'll never do anything with it. They'll have a, a garage band or something, whatever. Yeah, it happens. You know, and it's the same thing with acting. We, we, how many people do we see come out here to Los Angeles that want to be actors? And, you know, they're really going to try, and God bless them. I hope they make it, but it's not easy. It's not. You know, it's someone not. says, how can I become an actor? I said, go down to Hollywood Boulevard on Vine. There's a red door about three buildings down. Go get in line. Yeah. And they'll hire you. Yeah. <laughs> Wait there as long as you can. A couple but, years. But, but, you know, it's very discouraging because I'm, I, know, I know a lot of people will, will see videos like this and they'll say, oh, well, you know, it's, it's a, it sounds discouraging. Everybody wants to make it, but nobody makes it. Yeah. But it starts with you. I mean, you really have to believe in yourself. You know, if you put all that power and belief in yourself, I mean, you can absolutely achieve anything that you want. I just watched a thing on George Lucas with Star Wars and how he started that movie on a shoestring budget, didn't have anything, and found things. Everybody said, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. The actors didn't want to do it. They said it was stupid. He built props, and they didn't like it. And then it ended up being one of the highest grossing movies in the world. See? Because he hung on and he says, I had my dream, and I lived my dream, and that's what I did. Exactly. And it's the same thing with wrestling or bodybuilding. Okay, top bodybuilders, they get a few bucks. They don't get rich. They don't become millionaires, but they have good bodies. Yeah. And if this is your dream, this is what you want to do, you got to work towards it. Don't let anything get in your way. It's the same thing with wrestling. It's, this is what you want to do. Put your time in. But it's not just learning the skills in the ring. It's also having charisma. It's having a look, an opportunity, and uh, speaking skills. And get yourself in shape. Don't call me if you're not in shape and you're like five foot three, 300 pounds, or you're six foot eight, 120 pounds. Because it's, it's too odd. You have to have some sort of athletic looking body. Because wrestling itself, and you know, you're a beautiful girl and people want to see that. But when I started, they didn't have beautiful girls. They had Johnny Mae Young and Moolah. Well, they were beautiful. No, to their... Yeah, yeah but like their, their presence. Their presence was you know, beautiful, but they so weren't beautiful. glam. They were so girls. strong and they were like They were like next-door neighbor moms, and that's what people want to see. Two women yeah. beating each other like moms next door, and that, yeah. that made a difference. Then they went to the divas and this and that. But then the guys in the ring nowadays, they're all in shape. They work hard. It's really hard to do that. And if this is what you want to become, you got to put your time in, and you're going to have to pay for it because it costs money. Yeah, and you got, and it's not going to happen overnight. You don't get. I get these calls. How many t how many days do I have to work out? How many weeks? Six weeks, and I get a contract, or I get a. a do I get a diploma? That says now I'm a pro wrestler. No, I mean you always learn. Yeah, it depends how bad you want it. Yeah, it you, depends how you, bad you want. Just it. never stop learning. Yeah, but get to the gym and work out and, and develop your body. Get yourself in shape, your cardio especially, because you need it. And then you get into the ring, and then you learn the basics of running the ropes and doing tumbles forwards and backwards and bumps. Mm -hmm. And then someone will come into my ring and say, oh, the ropes hurt. No, you hurt because you hit the ropes. Yeah. <laughs> the ropes themselves don't hurt. Exactly. But, but if you, you know, they're not, they're not, uh, they're, they're cables. They're going to hurt when you hit them. If you hit them sure. hard, if you hit them right, they won't. Bumping in the ring and taking a back bump, yeah, it's going to jar you. It's not going to kill you, but it's going to jar you. Yeah. And then when I used to go out to dinner at night, people say, oh, wrestler, it's all fake. And I, I was telling somebody this at lunch today. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll put a front face lock on you and you give me $100. I'll give you $100 if you can get out of it. Oh, no, you'll hurt me. I said, well, you just said it was fake. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. I said, no, I don't know what you mean because we put our ass on the line in there and all those holds are real and they can be used real and we're not there to hurt one another, but we can. Yes, there's a predetermined finish, but you go from point A to point Z and you have to make the thing work and there's a lot of moves. There's a lot of accidents that, that the timing could be off mm -hmm. and you get hurt. And those chairs that we use, yes, they're right there at ringside. Those are real chairs. They're not fake. That's right. So you have to clue people in that they, they just don't understand it. Uh, and I don't like to be put on the spot when I go to dinner with somebody who doesn't understand what it is. They want to make fun of it because they have a regular 8-to-5 job. No way in the world will they ever do it. 
Just ignorant. Ignorant. Just ignorant. Yeah. They'll watch it and they'll think that's it's. They don't know what to say. Yeah. So uh, you know, it's funny because they only think about the physical. But mm-hmm. what about the stories? What about the characters? Totally. You know, it's a. To- it's. I think that's a different world um, that gets inserted into the physical that's overlooked by yeah. a lot of fans. Yeah. And I think that a lot of young wrestlers who are coming up to a company like, say, WWE, you know, you have to really invest in your character as well. As much as training as you put physically, mm-hmm. you have to do that with your education, you know. And, and, and what character are you going in with? Because, you know, I hear this word gimmick, mm-hmm. okay? And I never really I never really took to it. I never really took to the word gimmick. Yeah. It's always been about character. And you have to really look within and embrace the good, bad, and ugly. And then decide which part of yourself do you want to invest uh, when you get into the ring, what do you want to bring out? If you're the good guy or the bad guy, but even being the good and bad guy is not enough. No, you have to go much deeper. And people say, "Oh, I want to be like John Cena," and I used to say, "No, you want to be like yourself." Be like He's yourself. already taken, you know. Yeah. And the gimmick thing, I understand. If you're a heel and you have a little, and someone throws, a, they used to throw a paper cup at you in the ring, you take it, wad up, and break the guy's eyes with it. It was used for the moment just to get heat, you know. Sure. And then throw it away, or the referee takes it from you. Those little things work really well, but you still have to have your character and able be able to use it. Yeah. If you don't have the character to use it, then it's not going to work. No. And it's the same thing with bodybuilding. If this is what you want to do. Make yourself have a unique body of your own. Mm-hmm. Don't be like somebody else because that person's taken. Exactly. You know, write your material, produce your own material, direct your material, everything. You have to learn to be everything. And that's the way that you're going to ultimately get over um, in this business. The more you do, the better it's going to benefit you. And the same with acting. If you want to be an actor, you, you could shoot. You know, we have a camera here. We could shoot scenes right now. If you shoot your scenes and watch yourself and find new things to do and try to sit outside the box and make yourself do things you wouldn't normally do where you feel safe, you become a better actor. That's true. And the, and the wrestling itself, it's a theater in the round. Mm-hmm. And so this way you're working all four sides as an actor. You're making these people notice you and these people over here. You don't always turn your back on them because they're they're in round. So you got to keep working around the ring yeah. so that the audience sees what you're doing. And a lot of people forget about that. Now, the pros don't. They know. But at the indie level that I've seen in the past that I've worked, those guys just want to do as many bumps and, and high spots as they can and say that's a match. And then they'll wear their jeans into the ring with a pair of tennis shoes. They don't even dress properly. Right. You want to be a wrestler, right. dress like a wrestler. You right. Know? You're going to go play football as a pro, you're not going to wear jeans and tennis. Yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so you got to have the part. So you're going to continue training, doing what you're doing, and you're not going to give up with WWE. I know that. No. And you're going it's to go... It's not in my nature to give up. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. And yeah. um, play your cards right, I'll buy you some popcorn. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Vic. Thanks, you guys, for watching. There's some information that you can use to get you into a new year, and if this is what you want to do with your life, you have the dream to be a bodybuilder or a wrestler or an actor, whatever it takes, have, be open-minded about it and give it your all. Don't give up. Absolutely. And don't ever give up because you only have one life. This is not a dress rehearsal for something else. This is your main stage. This is, you know, the, the final curtain. So give it to yourself and do what you got to do. Keep the dream alive, guys. That's right. And I dream every night. That's right. Crazy shit. Oh, yeah. Love you guys. Thanks for watching Rick's Corner, and we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Drayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.